probably seen those funny videos with celebrities answering the top 10 search engine questions about themselves. Well, we've got a fun show planned for you today. Maureen Whitman and Walter Crawford are here to join me in answering the top 10 questions about homeschooling. Welcome to Homeschooling Saints, the podcast that helps you create the homeschool you love for the people you love. Our host is Lisa Maladnik, a Catholic life coach, TV host, best-selling author, and an instructor at Homeschool Connections. Before we get started, remember to subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're watching on YouTube, click the bell to join our channel. Hello and welcome. I'm Lisa Maladnik, your host, and I'm delighted to welcome the sponsors of our program, Maureen Whitman and Walter Crawford, back to the show to have some fun answering the top 10 questions about homeschooling. Together, Maureen Whitman and Walter Crawford are the co-founders and co-directors of Homeschool Connections, the Catholic Homeschool Conference, and Good Counsel Careers. Maureen and her husband, Rob, homeschooled their seven children through graduation. They are now in the grandparent season of their lives with nine grandchildren. Walter and his wife Emily are homeschooling parents of six children, having successfully graduated two so far. Together, Maureen and Walter have 40 plus joyous years of homeschooling experience. It is so good to have the two of you back. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, great to see you. Maureen, this was your idea, and you're kind of our master or mistress of ceremonies yeah. here. So tell tell us a little bit about what you're doing here and get us started. Well, you know, like you see those autocomplete shows all the time, right? So, you know, um, like Matt Damon, what does Matt Damon? And then he pulls it up. I thought, oh, that would be fun to do with homeschooling. So we Googled a bunch of different things. How do homeschoolers, <laughs> what do homeschoolers? And ours aren't quite as fancy. I used a little blue paint <laughs> tape that's what I had. But yeah, we thought it would be fun for the three of us to go through this and, and see what people are asking about homeschoolers. Fantastic. Are you ready to roll, Walter? Yeah, I'm I'm always ready to roll about this one. Okay. <laughs> this is favorite topic. Okay. The first one up is why do homeschoolers do, 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 score higher? <laughs> Take it away, Walter. <laughs> Why do they score higher, you guys? Well, I mean, it, it depends on what you mean by higher. I, I can tell you that there's a local, uh, a local homeschool run. Uh, it's uh, basically it's 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 essentially it's it's an entire homeschool group of well, athletes, student athletes, essentially that they they go out and they compete, um, yeah. uh, basketball, <laughs> football, you know that kind of thing. And they're very good. I mean, these guys, so they score <laughs> higher than most of their opponents. Now, this may not be the search that everyone's doing, though. Why do they I think it's funny. Walter goes right to sports. Yeah, I go right to sports. That's the first boy. thing on my mind. But I think they have something else in mind with asking this question. Maybe That's academics. Yeah. Probably academics. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think they score higher because just one on one learning, right? I mean, I remember years ago, there was a study done and uh, homeschoolers, I'm sorry, children in public schools, how well they do in school depends a lot on race, economic status, parents' education. But with homeschoolers, there was no difference, almost no difference at all between those three categories. I think it's just that one-on-one -on -one attention led by the person who loves you most, right? Wow. Well, that's really <laughs> revealing when you hear the categories where things, the numbers diverge. Right. It's a little scary and concerning. Yeah. Um, the only one where there was a difference was if you have a PhD and I have a high school diploma, your kids will do a little bit better than mine. But mm. race and economic status almost was no difference at all. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful to hear. All right. Should we try the next one? Yeah. Let's go on. Question number two. <laughs> Why do homeschoolers... Graduate early. Uh huh. Well, no, mine wow. graduated early. <laughs> <laughs> well, my one uh, didn't graduate early. She chose to go through all four years of high school, but we know a bunch of people who have because a lot of them get associate's degrees while they're in high school. And then yep. they go on to college early because they're ready and they know what they want to do by that point. Yeah. yeah. I had a few did community college or did one who was an EMT <laughs> mm. by the time she graduated from high school. So, you know, schooling takes less time at home. Yeah, the gift done. of time, definitely. Right? 
Why yep. are homeschoolers <laughs> socially <laughs> awkward? Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because all kids who go to public school are not socially awkward. <laughs> right, exactly. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we have yeah. ample evidence of stable, wonderful children running around, coming out of uh, the traditional school system that... <laughs> that mm. Well, I know Walter's oldest daughter. She's like the opposite of socially awkward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, the, you know what? Most of the kids I run up against in the homeschooling space, they aren't. They, in fact, they're the opposite of socially awkward. Yeah, in large part because they can they can carry on a conversation with an adult, right? I mean, these are kids that they're around their parents a lot. They're around other adults frequently. Um, they're not entrenched with peers that say that's verboten not don't talk to the other to the older folks you know they're older you know they, that kind of thing that's not what this is that's not what they are they they have a chance to in fact they don't have a choice they have to be around older people frequently so i i think that helps them with the awkwardness piece if you want to call it yeah. that i wonder yeah. sometimes yeah. if you know people who have special needs kids are more drawn to homeschooling so if you have an Asperger's kid, you know, I think yeah. kids, if you're more likely to homeschool and and those kids struggle, you know, no matter where they are. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I have one. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and, yeah. and I would argue that I like the awkward if you I like awkward, frankly, because awkward yeah. means they think differently, I means sometimes they think outside the box, which means they do things a little more innovative. You know, they're not they're not they're not boxed into whatever society's dictating. You know, I think it, it's social awkward is a good thing. Not a bad thing. Yeah. I always raise my, I'm raising my kids to be nerds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nerds rule the world. Yeah. And, and that whole point, too, of what might seem awkward to somebody else might just be innocence that they're not used to seeing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like Ashley said, yeah, yes. Okay. Why are homeschoolers? Da, 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 I can grab the tape. So weird. Because <laughs> their like parents the are one. weird. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> because weird we're not like way. everybody else. Because we're like ourselves. Yeah. So we're not trying to be like everyone else. We're letting our kids be free to be who they are. Yeah. And we're all inherently weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Every I, I one of my, us. Yes, indeed. Because we're unique and unrepeatable. But I taught my daughter to anytime anyone said you're weird to say thank you. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I remember the, the teens and the teen groups told me once. You're weird in a good way, Mrs. Whitman. <laughs> in, a cool, in a very cool way. <laughs> That's great. Why are homeschoolers so smart? Hmm. So we're awkward, smart, and weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Those are time. proud monikers. Those are proud monikers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But they go to think, have, reflect. Yeah. Read. I always felt like, you know, intelligence is really just a reflection of your curiosity. You know, your your sense of wonderment. And so yeah. if you're in a homeschool setting and you have a parent who's really promoting you to ask questions and be curious, yeah. might have been smarter, right? I told uh -huh. my daughters, I mean, my, my, my oldest daughter and now my youngest daughter is taking it um, very, very uh, personally. But I always said, you know what? Uh, never be afraid to ask questions. You know why? Because so many yeah. people have that same question. And the ones that say, don't ask questions, those are the slackers. Those are the ones that want to get out early. Those are the ones that want to class early. They're, they're the ones that don't give us, you know, don't ask, you know. It's, it's, it's kind of this weird fascination that kids have with trying to get out early, trying to avoid work, whatever. And I say, you know, no, dig deeper. If you have a question, don't be afraid to ask because it is exact. And, and sure enough, where is she at? She's at Hillsdale. What is she getting? She's almost got a 4.0. <laughs> you know, she's, Love it. She's Love frequently it. asking questions. She's not right. afraid. And she's looking at journalism. So she's she's going to be required to ask a lot of very tough questions, you know, of, of people. So it's like one of those people who changes afraid. the world. Yeah. 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 Can I add just like two quick little brain. points on that? Thinking the yeah. brain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Number one is that there's all sorts of scientific research that the more time you spend in nature, the higher your IQ. In other words, just being in nature raises your IQ. There's something fundamentally healthy about it for our brains. The other thing is emotional intelligence, which is the single highest predictor for success out in the world. And when you're around your family and you're required <laughs> to, you know, to take care of your own feelings and the feelings of others and to learn that relational stuff, you know, iron sharpens iron. We grow up.
up faster, I think, when we're with people who love us and, and hold us to higher standards. So. Yeah, you pick up on cues, right? You pick up <laughs> certain behavioral cues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that definitely elevates your uh, your smartness, if you will. Mm-hmm. Well, Google Absolutely. just needs to employ us and we can answer all these questions. <laughs> yeah. All right, ready for the next one? Let's do it. What do homeschoolers need to graduate? Ooh. Very state for state by state, right? There are regulations in every state. Yeah. Yep. So most states, like where I live, um, we don't even have any regulations. We just have recommendations. So wow. um, yeah, so just go check with Homeschool Legal Defense Association. There's a map. Click on your HSLDA.org, right? HSLDA.org. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And your state education department should have guidelines too. With New York, with New York State, where we are, it's very easy to graduate. Yeah. They have certain basic it's units you have to minimal. cover in four years. It's not hard. Parents stress out about that. Don't stress, mom and dad. Yeah. Um, you know, my yeah. daughter, the EMT, the EMT, the the um, paramedic. So, in order to get in the paramedic program, she had to meet all the state requirements for graduation before they would let her in the program. She met all those. Guy, all of those um, recommendations by halfway through her eleventh grade year, except for a one semester um, economics course, which we hmm. tackled really quick, got it done for, her, and she was able to go into this paramedic prob- uh, program. So it's not it's that wonderful. hard. And, 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 I, and you're hitting on something I was going to point out, Maureen. You know, it's uh, don't be afraid. You know, if you have kind of a two or three colleges, if that's indeed the path that they're to take. Don't be afraid to look at what they're asking your students to come. Yeah, to. so, yeah, I would think about... If they're In addition going to, to what the states are saying. Yeah, mm, if they're going to go to vocation, vocational school or college or whatever, see what their requirements are. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So okay, good. what do homeschoolers miss out on? Hmm. They miss out Bullying. On bad <laughs> yeah, bullying. <laughs> well, except for their big brother, but... Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all the uh, all the shenanigans that happen in uh, in school. You know, I, I think that that's a kind way of putting. <laughs> well, and if you're talking about things like dances or sports, you can have those things as a homeschooler, right? I mean, locally we oh, have yeah. homeschool prom. We have fabulous sports league. We have our own sports league where we compete against the public and Catholic schools. We have a state, you know, award winning band and orchestra. So. I get added mm-hmm. that because the Texas homeschool prom is actually uh, it's actually held locally. It is uh, about two th- or two to three thousand strong students that are all homeschooled. The uh, and oh my gosh, their prom blew my prom out of the water. They have yeah. it's thematic. Again, it's about two to three thousand students, and they're allowed to bring dates, of course. Um, they do a wonderful job. I mean, it's unbelievable what they do. One of what I think the theme was, oh, um, the voyage of the Don Treader. And so, oh, no kidding. Yeah, I think that's and, and so they have all these different <laughs> hmm. like thema- themes from the Don Treader, like the, the the ships and things like that. And and they had at one point they mm-hmm. had like a drone that would circle around the, 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 uh, the different room and, or the room and, and they would actually see, um, take pictures of the kids from a, a high oh, wow. crazy. Cool. And the, another one, I forget the theme for this one uh, that my daughter went to, we ended up helping with the, um, with the, the work behind it. Cause it takes a, a they start months in advance. Uh, the parents do it's all volunteer, but, they um they had it was a, the it was the 50th anniversary of queen victoria what what that was like that experience and so they had all these entertainers that were the, like circus performers and stuff they even had like cirque du soleil performers actually at the prom wow and wow. unbelievable and it was just so cool and i so if you're in texas you don't have to miss out on prom <laughs> no, not at all. It was, in fact, there are a lot of public school and, and private school kids who were just, they were like, tr- invite me, invite me, trying to get in. <laughs> they were like, they wanted to be there for it. So, oh, God. No, well, no, when I was in high school, I didn't go to prom. I had no desire. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so we have several boards, but the last one for this board is why can't homeschoolers play sports? 
Ha ha. I think we've debunked that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we already did. N- not only will <laughs> local fun. school districts sometimes allow our kids to partake of things that are going on in the district, we do pay taxes. Right. They might go in for a science lab or they might go out for a team. It depends on the school district. But as, as you Maureen said before, your own league, like and we Walter has said, own yes, yeah. exactly. You can yeah. do I mean, I take my too. sons, uh, the five-year-old and the 10-year-old, to the gym every morning. We play basketball. Yeah. With his buddies who are also homeschooled. So we're up at 630 in the morning. And we're hooping it up, you know, and they're having a great time doing it. <laughs> That's we play awesome. for yeah, my kids did half. shooting sports through 4-H. And yeah, they do 4-H. Uh, she does shotgun. And, the NRA. Yeah. 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 So, All right. So, Maureen, before we go on to the next board, yeah. why don't we just do our quick sponsor break? Okay, and then okay. we'll come back in just a moment with more top 10 questions about homeschooling with Walter and Maureen. See you soon. Hi, I'm Walter Crawford. And I'm Maureen Whitman. We are the co-founders of homeschoolconnections.com and proud sponsors of the Homeschooling Saints podcast. Which is here to help you homeschool more joyfully, more easily, and more effectively. We want to thank you for listening. And we invite you to check out our courses at homeschoolconnections.com. And now back to our program. All right, we are back with Maureen Whitman and Walter Crawford answering the top 10 questions about homeschooling. Okay, so where are we now, Maureen? So now we have, how do homeschoolers? How did Google autocomplete? How do homeschoolers? So the most asked question on Google about how do homeschoolers is, how do homeschoolers get a diploma? All right, that's an easy one, right? Um, go online, Google free home diploma template, print it out, fill in your kid's name, <laughs> print it on some nice, uh, ivory card stock, put it in a frame, <laughs> sign it. <laughs> yeah. That's how they get a diploma. And then you yeah. have a little party. You have a, <laughs> unless you're, you know, it's the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> yeah. And you can get your school district to email you party. confirming that they got all your you know, your records that were required. Um, and and if anyone needs to see that, fine. But yeah, you Has can. anyone ever asked to see your diploma, Lisa? No. <laughs> Walter? <laughs> no, no one has ever asked. Not to my diploma. recollection, no. <laughs> <laughs> the transcript. What they want is to see your transcript. That's right. How do homeschoolers get into college? <laughs> Well, they, they walk. sneak in. Step in. They, they <laughs> walk they in. Yeah, walk exactly. in like everyone else. <laughs> they get recruited. I mean, a lot of schools yeah. really love the homeschoolers. They're great college campus citizens. They tend to be wonderful at independent study. They, you know, they're good to have on campus. I had a friend years ago. So when I first started homeschooling almost 30 years ago, who um, interviewed applicants for Harvard. So back then, it was a little harder for homeschoolers to get into public universities, but schools like Harvard, he's he's like, we actively recruit them because they're more engaged in their community. They're they're more than just academic students. They're they have more time to be out in their community and be more involved. So they loved yeah. them. And they tend to be pointy too. That's one of those admissions terms that means they've gone deep on something, whether it's playing the yeah. piano or understanding rocket science or whatever that might be homeschool kids yeah. have have the bandwidth to do that so i would rather i always it was always kind of my focus with my kids i preferred to go deep rather than wide because if you teach them to get excited and love a subject they can go wide later when they need it you know what i mean um mm-hmm. teach them how to learn because you can't teach them everything and it's much more fun to go deep right yeah all right how do homeschoolers graduate <laughs> yeah yeah do yeah <laughs> well i mean i can tell you one of the things we we do yeah uh, it's great actually we have our own homeschool graduation ceremony so we have we lead yeah, off with yeah, mass we and we have a, a a nice dinner we'll usually have a keynote uh oh, the, nice. one that, <laughs> the one that we had last year was a wonderful gentleman a former military uh, very uh, senior represent senior position inside of um, one of the defense contractors, and uh, he was giving all these words of advice. And one of the things he said, and he looked right at my son, who has a bowl haircut, kind of sorta, 
and his ha- eyes hanging over, you know, the, the new hairstyle, right? Is the hair hangs really low right above the brow, <laughs> right? And all, it kind of circles the head kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, he looked right at him and says, get a haircut. <laughs> 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 and I thought, yeah, I, golly, I've been telling him that a long time. <laughs> but, um, you know, it was one of the, neat, one of the neatest things because the kids – Loved it. We had a fo- photograph booth. We had great food, you know, wow, nice. catered. It was just a neat experience. And the kids walked, you know, they all walked. And the parents, which is kind of neat, the parents are the ones who hand the kids their diploma. Yeah. So they're so so they're involved. It's really neat. It's There's a really many different neat. ways you could do that. You sure. can have a house, you can what do your mean? homeschool group. I mean, when we lived in Lansing, we had maybe just three or four kids every year, but was at the cathedral the whole you know, all hundred families, all the homeschooling oh. families showed up and all their family and, you know, extended family and had a potluck and yeah. yeah and then we had so much open fun. houses for our kids, except for the last one who graduated the height of the pandemic, but <laughs> <laughs> he was actually happy about that. All right. How do homeschoolers make friends? Oh my gosh, there's no end to it. We had to right? we had to decide to stay home some days because there were so many opportunities. We're in very densely packed Long Island. So yeah. you you really had to like make a lot of choices so that you weren't constantly out with friends necessarily, even though a lot of them were learning opportunities as well. But yeah. they don't have any trouble making friends. My kids always tease we're too socialized. <laughs> <laughs> How do homeschoolers? Take the SAT, uh, just like everyone else. You sign up at your local public school, go online, see where it's being offered, sign up, just like everyone else. I would just add that, you know, one of the things about the SAT is, um, you know, it, it's a, it can be tough because it has its own, you know, with schools, they, they, a lot of traditional schools have their own SAT focus, right, In you know, type of events Class. or classes or whatever we get those too i mean homeschoolers take it at homeschool connections or other places mm-hmm. well yeah, yeah that's what i was gonna or say they get is, together for sat prep yep yeah we'll they'll get together and that kind of thing what we did was uh we employed a local tutor who is excellent and my goodness he bumped their scores up by 200 points and they were just you know they were to get into their school of choice essentially so yeah Pretty, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. How do homeschoolers socialize? <laughs> we kind of handled that already. Yeah, yeah, I think we already did. Yeah. We have parties, we have potlucks, we have co ops. Dances. We have dances. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. not just the prom, Band but. And- mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, they got plenty of. So we there do are a lot of square of- dancing here on Long Island, believe it or not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've done that here. That's so fun. You get a caller. So we like once a month at um, the really big church around the way. Yeah. It's yeah. Super our kids fun. love it. How do homeschoolers get a GPA? <laughs> All right. That one's super easy, Maureen, right? Go online, Google GPA calculator, <laughs> plug in your kids' <laughs> grades, and that puts out your GPA. <laughs> so I got tape all stuck to my fingers here. <laughs> so, so a big pile. The hazardous job here. you've got there, Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> no, the know, GPA is it, it's right. It's it is hard to calculate. Figure, you know, especially you know if they're doing like a four week course and six week, like figuring that out. But you go to the GPA calculator; it's free, and then you just plug it into their transcript. I mean, I hope the takeaway from fo- we're we're joking, we're kind of in jest. We're also answering some of these questions in a serious way. I hope some of the parents who are listening to this are saying, you know what, it's not as hard as it as as people make it sound, right? right? And then mm-hmm. this is, in, in a sense, this is an apologetics of homeschooling, right? <laughs> We're defending <laughs> or answering commonly or frequently asked questions that Google is raising, you know, that people are, you know, typing well, what, in. Yeah, this is this is what people are Googling. So this is the That's order it showed up. So that, you know, the number one question. Yeah. Right here. You, you... Yeah, we started I mean, off with top 10 and we ended up with how many? About yeah, we're, 20. Yeah, we're with like 20 or 30 or 40. Yeah. yeah. I've Keep going, Marie. We got a few right. more here. Yeah. All right. Next Let's one is do what do homeschoolers? So uh-huh. what do homeschoolers eat? The number no. one thing Let's that guess. people Try to guess. Uh, what do you think it is, Walter? Uh, what do homeschoolers? Um, <laughs> golly. Uh, I have no idea. I, I don't even know what to guess. What do you think it is, Lisa? 
I was going to say, what do they eat? Or oh, what do homeschoolers like to do for fun? All right, let's see. The number Arms. one Googled, what do homeschoolers do? <laughs> what do they everything. do? Uh, they homeschool. That's what they do. But they also do everything <laughs> you have don't have time to do. <laughs> <laughs> what do homeschoolers need to graduate? So we already answered. Uh, we, right? Yeah. Like that, that, that horse has been beaten. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> what do home, <laughs> what do homeschoolers do all day? Now that <sighs> is a really we, good question. We lay around in our pajamas and read classic novels, and then and if we want that. to, we get dressed and we go hang out with some friends and do something <laughs> fun. How does that sound? Get out of our pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> One-on-one -on -one education takes way less time. It does. So, you know, you get your academics done and you go have fun. You you let your kids explore their special interests, whether that be music or dance or nature, you know. So yeah. we were always on the go. I always used to say, I don't know why they call this homeschooling. It should be called car schooling. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, the simplicity of it, uh, you know, <laughs> One thing I like about the homeschooling is the answer to this question, frankly, because we 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 have I like to call it our recess, if you want to call it that, but yeah. our athletic portion first thing in the morning, like I mentioned earlier. But also from there, we come home. We have because this is kind of like a day in the life type question. Right. Um, and we come home. We usually start off with prayer for the first 15 minutes. Then we go right into that. We go, we, we usually are serving breakfast at about that point in time right after we pray. And while I'm preparing breakfast, some of the younger ones, because I, I will homeschool uh, the kids, the younger ones anyway, for the first couple of, um, let's say, hour, hour and 15 minutes or so, um, get them through their material. And we're already, by the time we're done in the next, and these are, this is a, a seven year old. And yes, the five year old is, Something that's philosophically speaking, I don't think it's necessary to start that early, but he likes to do it because he he sees his sisters and his older kids, the older kids doing it. They want to play school, you know? Yeah, he, he's in. I mean, he's he's learning. I mean, there's no doubt about it. it he's, he's definitely focused. But, but there's no pressure, right? There is no pressure. It's there not, is no pressure. Yeah. No. yeah. So anyway, he, he's doing his thing. But anyway, we, we're done with almost all their material in about an hour and 15 minutes. And they they will finish up probably around, you know, with a break in there and a snack. They'll be done by 11. You know, they're done by 11. And the same with the older two that are now still home. I mean, they're done by noon. And my goodness. And how cool is that? They have the rest of the afternoon to, to you know, do whatever, you know, is interesting to them. Or, you know, right. if, it's, if it's something we got chores we got to do or whatever. We're, we're go doing. play sports or band and all those other things we're, we talked mm -hmm. about, right? Volunteer in the community, do an internship or yeah, something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so I love yeah, they can shadow other people. So if they're interested, I had a daughter, the the MT shadowed, you know, a fireman. You know, do all kinds of fun things. All right. Mm -hmm. What do homeschoolers or what do homeschool transcripts look like? Mm -hmm. We haven't had that one yet. That's a good one. So Ours Again, was an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> if you go to homeschoolconnections.com, free stuff at the <laughs> bottom. We have a free form, you know, transcript form or any place. You can just Google free transcript form. A lot of colleges, like I think Franciscan, uh, Benedictine, a few of them have samples of transcripts for homeschoolers. Just fill, find a, a form, fill in the blanks, go to that free GPA calculator, it looks yeah, like I mean, everyone else's transcript, only you filled it out and you signed it. The question inherently is inferring how complicated it is to put together a transcript, and it's not. It's not. You know, when, so when thing, we right, turn it over to the schools, when we yeah. turn it over to the schools to do it for us, right. you know, they're doing their time, they're, they're getting the grades from the teachers, and that's going on their record, and this, that, and the other. Well, who's the teacher? Who's the principal? Who's the, that's you. As you as a homeschooler, it's not that complicated. They they have a formula. There there's has some happens to be accredited, but guess what? Well, you're the accreditor. You're the accreditor, and if as you want to, find, you're the accreditor. Yep. And if you want to get an accredited transcript, there are ways of doing that too. Well, yeah, you can pay someone to do it. 
But, so, you know, there are plenty, yeah, plenty of companies out there who will happily take your money. Yeah. And and do a transcript for you. But it's that, that is a big question. We get a lot at homeschool yeah. connections. People are real nervous about that. Really, it's 15 minutes at the end of every quarter, even at the end of every semester. I do recommend that you make sure you do do that at least at once every semester, if not every quarter. And don't wait till they graduate. <laughs> <laughs> It's, that's a disaster, but it, it's really very simple. All right. How do homeschoolers get a driving permit? Huh. Exactly the same way as you know, that else. extra time we talked about in the <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it may depend on the state or even the locality where I live. We had to go to the local public school and just come up, say we're coming and um, go into the secretary's office and I, sh- what I, I think I had to show her my driver's license and they gave me a permit for my son or my daughter, whoever it was at the time. And then we took at Michigan. You have to take driver's ed like through a company. You don't do it through the school. So then we signed up for driver's ed, gave mm-hmm. them our money. <laughs> we were theoretically invited to apply to our high school driver ed program, but it was in such high demand that we were always on a waiting list. So we ended uh-huh. up enrolling with a little driving school. It really was not very expensive. She yeah. got a lot of private lessons and she went through all of the training, got her permit and then got her license. And guys, they did a great job. Yeah, some driving schools even come pick them up at your house. You know, yeah, that's what so he did. You drive with them. And yeah, so and let me just add to that, because yeah. I think that's so, you know, the great thing is once they have the driving permit and the license behind them, you know, they can get jobs while everyone else is in school. Mm-hmm. So if well, again, want, it depends on where you live. So it so does, so but it will mean, not it, let you uh, minor work during school hours. So it depends on, on where you live. Uh, that's that's fair. That's fair. But, it, but my it, kids it, were able to do internships like my yeah. son worked in the state. Like we lived in Lansing, which is our state capital. And he worked in the legislature. And at one time he was considering politics and that killed any desire. <laughs> <laughs> a fight broke out one day on the on the House floor. And oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next one. How do homeschoolers no, what do homeschoolers need to get into college? So we yeah. already answered that. They just transcripts, scores. Well, okay. Not all colleges need SATs and things like that. There are hundreds Our of them LT. that don't require them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, just, right. I, I, classic learning. What, want to want more? I, I was just yeah. saying, I, w- I do recommend that they do try to take the test for a couple reasons. One, it teaches them how to take a time test, which a lot of homeschoolers don't have to do usually in, in a yeah. homeschool type setting. So they learn some skills there. But two, and maybe even more importantly, while schools are continuing to drop the requirements of standardized tests, the reason why you'd want to take it is for scholarship money. Um, you, they, even though you can get into the school without taking it, that you can't get a scholarship usually without taking it. So you want to, you want to at least give it your best part. Well, of keep the, your options. Try. <laughs> your options. Try. Yeah. yeah, it is good to not, like Walter said, know how to do a time test. I mean, I always tell the story of my kids when they went to get their hunter safety test. Um, they had never done a bubble test before, you know, where you fill in the little bubbles with your number two pencil. And so <laughs> I happened to be in the room and they sat down to do their little hunter safety test. And they're all looking at me like, what? So I had to <laughs> the guy given the test and say, hey, my homeschooled kids don't know how to, can I go tell them how to fill in the circles? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it probably That's doesn't so have them practice that. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Okay, our last board. So these are more statements than questions. How, I'm sorry, homeschoolers are. So I think this is going to tell us a lot of what the general public thinks of us. Should I go from the bottom up or the top down? I'm nervous. I'm nervous. (laughs) Oh, I'm not really nervous. dangerous characters. I know what what they think of us, but go ahead, Maureen. Should I start from the bottom and go up or start the top and go down? That's up to you. Yeah, let's start from the bottom and go up. Let's start with the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the seventh most search. Homeschoolers (laughs) are more successful. That's nice. Mm, In many ways, that's true. 
They graduate more often from college. They tend to use their major more. About 85% of students, I read this, I don't, I can't tell, remember yeah. where it was from, don't use their degree. Like 85% graduate with a lot of debt and don't use their degree. They end up doing something else. But wow. homeschoolers have a much higher rate, not only of graduation, but of using their degree because they've had a lot of time to think about it, prepare. They have really explicit passions by that point, and they usually have been working towards something that's a better fit. That is so interesting. And if they and if they still need to find that, there's always goodcounselcareers.com to help them. With that. <laughs> there you go. So those of you are wondering, like, why we're laughing, Walt and I just started a new business called. <laughs> and that will be in the show notes, folks. Check it com. out. <laughs> Make sure to put that in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, this is yet another sponsor break. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to be sick of me and Walter by the end of the show. I'm you. Yeah. Did you notice how fast they changed their clothes to go out to do the sponsor break and then come back? You guys are incredible. We are. We are, we are very quick. That's what homeschoolers do. That's the other question that we... <laughs> what do not just the kids, but the they? parents who do the homeschooling. So, <laughs> Okay, homeschoolers are number six. Antisocial. <laughs> so that's different, right? Than being hmm. not being socialized. Antisocial is like you don't want to do him. Yeah, yeah you're, you're against it. It's true. Yeah. We don't like well, people. People are. I mean, there are I hope that, social I hope, people everywhere. What's that? Yeah, we meet people. And I hope we're by our living <laughs> proof of our joviality, our. <laughs> we're, we are not that, right? I mean, I'm sure, there are kids. homeschoolers that are antisocial, just like there are people who go to. You know, brick and mortar yeah. schools are antisocial, but yeah. Well, sometimes people homeschool for a lot of different reasons. If the parents are antisocial because they feel that the society is not good for their children, they might very well avoid society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So True. interesting. All right, number five, homeschoolers are arrogant. Oh, that's a d ridiculous thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Just because we're better than you, you think we're arrogant? I mean, what? come on. They, there is a defensiveness I've found in more recent years as homeschooling's gone more mainstream, where sometimes people do get defensive when they find out you're a homeschooler. So, you know, I guess there are people who assume we're arrogant because we think mm. we're better than them because of what we're doing, but mm. we're not. I mean, just because we are doesn't mean we try to Stop show it. it. <laughs> I can't throw anything at you, Walter. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> we're just doing the best we know how and see where it says homeschoolers are arrogant okay. it's, it, the results show C. Walter <laughs> <laughs> your picture's there <laughs> okay, the number four most googled homeschoolers are not hermits <laughs> correct no, for hermits. the most part correct <laughs> there, again there are probably some hermits out there every now and then you'll hear about some homeschool family living in a tree house and <laughs> that's not the norm. Mm -hmm. All right. Homeschoolers are number three, more social. Uh -huh. That's funny. So that beat, that's number three. Antisocial was number six. So, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so I think the government, or that the government, the general <laughs> public so far, we only have too bad of an image of us. Okay. Number two, homeschoolers are, are you ready? And get the tape. Weird. Weird. Homeschoolers are weird. We already covered that, didn't you? We're Depends who's talking, yeah. right? We're, we're a good kind of weird. It's a moniker that we care to, we, we do want to own, right? I mean, mm. that we talked about, so. Yeah, if weird, weird means people. that we don't do what everyone else does just because that's what everyone else does. Yep. Owning it. We're more interesting, <laughs> right? I mean, we're not homogenized. We're. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last one, last board. Drum roll, please, last Lisa. The number please. one Google <laughs> homeschoolers are. Do, 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 do. More independent. Hmm. That not, actually has it's been kind of nice. Yeah. You know, it, people don't think too badly of us. So homeschoolers are more independent. Yeah. Well, just kind of speak. What we do, right? I mean, we have to be. We're we're on our own. <laughs> I mean, yeah. not completely. We have communities, and we have support but um we're independent of government schools or yeah mm -hmm. yeah and we tend to our kids tend to have time to 
to generate more learning in terms of life skills as well. Um, so they go off to college able to do their laundry and able to, you know, budget right. their spending and things like that. I don't mean every kid has all these skills, but because they've been in a family and they've absorbed how the family operates, um, I think they probably do go out with more life skills. And, and those colleges that have said they value homeschooled students have said that they're good independent learners. Well, you know, I remember my sister sharing this when, you know, her kids were in school all day and then they came home and they were expected to do homework and they didn't have time to help around the house. And, you know, she was doing the brunt of the housework. We're in our family, you know, because your kids never leave. <laughs> They're always there. <laughs> the house is always a mess. Um, you know, they're expected to help with chores and laundry. And so they learned. Yeah, you're right. So they learned to do those things. Um in most, I mean, not every case, but in most cases, I would say that's pretty much the norm for us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This has been so much fun. I'd like to just kind of go around the circle, too. And having just been through kind of what are the top searches and what do people think of us, what, what's one last thing that you'd like to pull forward about homeschoolers or anything else? What would you like to leave our listeners with? Well, I was surprised how positive it was. So that was that was really fun. Um, but you know, since the pandemic, more people are homeschooling. Um, I had a friend tell me, you know, just a few days ago, she's like, you know, the pandemic was our trial run, something we wanted to do for a long time. And we were thrown into it and it was like, okay, we can do that. So, you know, I think more people have experience. So we're seeing kind of a more positive outlook. So yeah, that's good. Yeah. What do you think, Walter? You know, I don't know if I have a Anything that I that other than what Maureen said, you know, there were some more positive comments than I kind of anticipated. Um, what I would just say, you know, kind of what I said earlier that homeschooling historically, and 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 I think the tide is beginning to turn because so many people are doing it now in various forms, various fashions. If it's not the traditional school, or at least we get hybrids, which has a definite homeschool element to it. But, you know, my, my thought is, is that I, I think that, you know, homeschooling itself is first for us personally, it's been a very much of an answered prayer. It's gotten our kids in a really good spot. We're closer to them. And frankly, they're closer to one another. You know, that's one of the things that um, we didn't talk about. We didn't mention, but certainly one of the things that uh, just an anecdotal experience I can share with you. We have a, um, uh, it's a boys group that meets at two to four, you know, talking about the afternoon hours. What do we do? One of the things that we do is we participate in a local boys group that meets from two to four. And what was nice is we're commuting from the orig origin of uh, the location, which happens to be someone's house to a nearby park. But we had to walk to it. And I happen to be one of the dads that are kind of serving, you know, just making sure everything, no, no one slept behind that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm at the back and I see my 10 year old and five year old, uh, holding hands. Mm. And he, my, the, in other words, the big brothers looking out for the little brother because we're in the middle of the street. We're kind of, uh, trying, it's not a high traffic area, but we had to kind of get to the side when, I, when cars were coming through and whatnot. But that's what I like. I like, in addition to all the things we've talked about, the academic side of it, you know, retaining your spiritual life. Uh, you're not you're not uh, distanced from that or not yeah. discouraged from talking about it in certain circles, that sort of thing. In addition to all those things, the family life is something that uh, if, if I were to add one search thing that um, that I would say we just talked about homeschoolers are and number eight are closer together. Right. The number eight's closer together that the families tend to be they they're more they're more understand. They, I'm not saying that they're perfect, by the way. <laughs> we get our fair share of arguments <laughs> and whatnot. It happens often. But but put it but it's uh, well, because we know each other well enough. Right. Because we are around each other frequently and they know each other much better. They're also closer. And right. they really in, in even distances with the older two. Now they're in college. They're closer. Uh, and they check in on each other and they're communicating. You know, that's the kind of thing that I, I love about it. And, well, I, mean, and I have seven kids dad, from 20, yeah, 20 to 33. So all my kids have graduated. They're all adults and they're really close. All seven of them. Mm. 
So uh, yeah, I, I I attribute a lot of that to homeschooling. That's a really good point, Walter. I think the yeah. family life that homeschooling affords us, and in giving our children a fun childhood where they could explore, and yeah, yeah those family bonds. Yeah, and for any of you listening that have an only child, I I I didn't ha- wasn't able to have a baby till late in life, and we ended up homeschooling her, and her, to this day she's in her mid twenties. Her best friends are from her homeschool days. Yeah, they are rock solid forever so the, family friends. Too, right? I mean, they're like her sisters. Yes. Yeah, and we're brothers. still really close. You know, we're having a baby shower for one of my daughters, um, who's twenty nine, in a few weeks, and. Everyone coming, who are they? They're her homeschool friends, you know, from 10 years ago, 11 mm-hmm. years ago. They're still yeah. close. They have a little book club they do online together, even though they all live in different cities. They fly and visit each other. And so that's your family, too. I mean, Bravo. To community. Bravo. Yeah. Praise Good God. job, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. So whether it's an only child or, or seven, it's a great way to raise a family. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Thank you both so much. This has been super fun. Now I want to do lots more of these. This is a really fun format. (laughs) Everybody, thank you for being with us. Uh, We really appreciate your tuning in each week. We are delighted to, uh, to be doing these kinds of fun things for you, and we are praying for you. So please pray for us, too, and have a beautiful day. God bless you. And that's our show for today. Our program is sponsored by homeschoolconnections.com. Be sure to subscribe to Homeschooling Saints and leave us an honest review. God bless you and thank you for joining us.